in this series of videos I've been attempting to repair and restore this vintage HP 9845B computer. I've had a lot of faults with this and it's been quite an interesting machine to work on. I've still got quite a way to go with this yet. I've also got quite a few additional spares and parts for it that I need to uh, fix and check and test. So I will be posting more videos on that. If you want to see more detailed fault finding on some of those then leave a comment. Um, but the thing I've been working on recently is uh, trying to get data off a fairly large number of tapes for this machine and I've been doing that using the GPIB interface. Now I did get a GPIB interface with this machine unfortunately it didn't work. I tried plugging it in and it caused the machine to lock up and um, when I eventually found out what it was that was doing that I corrected that and it was a fault within the interface itself but I then found it was really a uh, flaky in operation it would sometimes work it would get halfway through transferring data and then lock up and um, it varied depending on which of the slots on the rear of the machine I plugged it into and I found another um, buffer within the GPIB that was failing I changed that it improved things a little bit but it's still um, vary quite a bit in its performance and generally GPIB should be pretty much bulletproof the um, protocol it uses is very um, robust so um, clearly something was wrong now it turned out that the um, buffer chips in the uh, HP 9845 interface card were starting to fail it's basically some bi-directional buffers that are on that card and they were working but the output levels had dropped quite significantly and that in conjunction with the um, the aging of the GPIB interface itself meant that the two working together weren't that happy so I ended up replacing all the buffer chips in the uh, interface card on the 9845 and that completely cured it it's been very robust ever since um, as part of that testing as you can probably tell from what I've got on the bench here I was using the logic analyzer to try and track down what was going on. Uh, I also have this ICS um, 4810, this is a bus analyzer, it's a, really a, a manual way of driving a GPIB interface. If you're interested in seeing this in operation then leave a comment. They are quite useful, um, the logic analyzer lets you observe what's going on. But the 4810 allows you to manually step through the various phases of a GPIB interface and you can uh, control each of the individual lines uh, independently. So you can uh, effectively freeze the interface, you can apply certain values and control signals to it and that means that rather than trying to capture something on the logic analyzer that's occurring at fairly high speed, you can uh, effectively freeze the GPIB interface at any particular part and as long as there's no timeout on any device connected to it you can effectively single step and not just single step in terms of a transfer you can single step the individual parts of the protocol so these are uh, kind of old but uh, can be very useful these are fairly interesting to work on as well you probably find if you buy one of these it won't work um, the like a sandwich uh, assembly um, PCBs inside and they've got these weird connectors between the two that fall to pieces and uh, you can repair them but um, chances are if you get one of these um, you'll find it rattle and there's loads of these little, little bits of connectors um, floating around inside so if you do get one don't try and turn it on um, because you will try you will probably do quite a lot of damage um, because they do tend to short together as well as they move around um, okay, so what we're going to do is uh, just I'll briefly um, describe what I've been doing in terms of trying to transfer data from the tapes. I've showed quite a number of videos in which I was trying to restore the tapes and get data off them. Uh, once I'd got a tape to the point where I could read it, I um, copied the contents either bit by bit or file by file onto some uh, newer tapes. Um, mostly using DC 2120s uh, where I've shortened the tapes they do seem to work the best there are a couple of versions of these tapes and 
the main way they vary is in the type of drive belt that's fitted and the ones that you want are the ones that when you take them off they immediately shrivel up and they're kind of spiral wound uh, drive belts and they do seem to work much better than the straight wound belts the straight wound belts you can tell because when you take them off they don't really change shape or length and that's one of the problems if you try and shorten the tape because the belt won't shrink down um, it becomes very slack and some tapes I have put an extra uh, idler wheel in so I've replaced this boss here that's normally got a screw in it um, with an extra wheel and then they put the belt around it and that takes up the, uh, the slack um, but the um, spiral wound belts do work very well because they will shrink right down when you take the tape off an alternative is not to shorten the tape just punch some extra holes in it and then they will work fine so the tape drives on this machine are now working very reliably I can read and write uh, the new tapes and I'm having some success with the older tapes I'm getting data off them so once I've got the data off the old tape and got it onto the new tape the next thing is to get that data transferred to the PC so I've got a, a digital copy of that file so the way I go about doing that as I said I use the GPIB interface so I'll just move the camera so you can see the screen on the 9845 I'll also bring up into the corner of the screen the uh, PC screen so we can see what we're doing at the PC end so I'm using the GPIB interface on the HP 9845 and I'm using HT Basic and a GPIB interface on the PC and just writing a couple of small uh, programs uh, to allow the interface to transfer data there's quite a lot of information online and uh, in particular in the programming um, books for this machine that give some basic examples as to how to write the code for doing that and I've just modified uh, one of those very slightly uh, you can write them from scratch it's a very simple protocol but uh, you don't need anything particularly complex and um, we'll start with the code that I've got on the 9845 and then we'll look at the code on the PC and we'll try transferring some data okay so on the 9845 I've got a test tape in the right hand drive and there's not much on that tape if we have a quick look at the catalogue for that tape you can see there's just four files on there we've got three files I'm using for the GPIB just selecting whichever one is most uh, appropriate for the type of data I'm trying to transfer and the fcopy file is and that's just one of the files I got off one of the tapes uh, but it's quite a long program so it's quite useful for running these tests uh, what I want to do is get uh, test 3 at the moment there's nothing in memory on this machine so we'll uh, get the uh, test 3 program So as you can see, it's a fairly short uh, program. I don't know if you can actually read what's on the screen, but um, it doesn't do very much. It creates a couple of buffers. As I said, there, there are examples of um, this code or versions of this code in the uh, programming reference documents for the HP 9845. This is just a slightly modified version of that. I believe there are other versions of this online as well that you can look for. Um, this one hard codes the um, the address of the target machine. In this case, I've got the PC GPIB set to address 20, and hence I've got this set to send data out of the GPIB port 7 address to address 20, which is what the 720 is. You can see on the screen there, and it will keep sending files until you enter a file name of exit and then it will terminate the program it uh, prints a character on the screen for every line of code that it sends so you can see as it progresses and that's 
pretty much all it does. It just asks for a file name, it sends that, it reads that file from the tape and then sends that through the GPIB to the uh, PC. So I'll just call up the PC screen on the right here and as you can see very similar type of program that we have and all it's really doing is the reverse of what we have on the 9845. It's set as a listener, it's waiting for data to come in on its um, GPIB interface and it will write that into a file. It will use the supplied file name to create the file and then copy all the data until it gets the end of file indication. And then it will close the file and we should see that then uh, available on the PC. So I'll start the code running on the PC first. So as you can see the code is running on the PC. It uh, starts off by reading the status information from the GPIB interface, the, the driver. And I've got a driver loaded for the particular card type that I've got installed in the PC. And as you can see, it's set to address 20. There are no errors showing, which is what the error naught means. And the status of the port is ready. So we can now run the code we've got on the uh, 9845. And the code is now running and you can see it's asking for a file name. So we'll try sending the, um, we'll send test1 because it's uh, quite a short program. So we'll enter that as the file name. It reads that from the tape and then it should send that line by line. So as you can see it's sent that and it's complete. If we look at the PC we'll see that file is available and the system is now ready to send the next file so we'll now send the fcopy file much longer file and as you can see that file is being transferred this is about 35 uh, K of data and this has been read direct from the tape as you can see you can see the tape uh, going around and you can also see the PC is receiving the file As I said, it's quite a long file, so I'm um, showing this in real time. And that is complete. So We'll have a look at that file on the PC. And as you can see, it's a very long file. So it's quite an efficient way of sending it. It's nowhere near as fast as modern systems, of course, but for a vintage machine like this, to take the data off a tape drive and send it at a reasonable rate, is uh, quite good and for the, the time when this machine was built extremely good so i've been doing this now for the last couple of weeks and because it's going to be a fairly long ongoing process i've decided to continue with the repairs and uh, i may get back to this um, in the future if you want to see more of this sort of thing then leave a comment um, but in the next video in this series we'll continue with the repairs and uh, see if we can get this machine um, buttoned up and uh, I'll then be using it as a test bed for some additional repairs.